we have feature, uh, our second feature to come. And that is Susan Levine, singer-songwriter, coming from Newburyport this morning. Susan gave a quote, I think we need poetry and music to reflect the world, but also to make the world and our complicated feelings bearable and beautiful. Susan grew up in Medford, loved playing outside, pretend for hours in trees, uh, thinking of spaceships and being on stage, and she pursued childhood theater and went on to uh, work in acting in New York City. And when she was in a production of A Christmas Carol over in Europe, heard uh, some music by Sean Colvin and uh, was really struck by the words and the genuine nature of Sean and her song and decided, this is what I really want to be doing and then very quickly uh, learned how to play guitar and started writing her own songs and moved to New Mexico and wrote songs by day and sang Broadway tunes in a restaurant by night and uh, was just loving the sharing of music. She moved back to Massachusetts and uh, started to work as a music therapist with autistic children and has two children of her own now. And she's been singing out there since. She has two CDs that we have here today. And uh, when she's been writing and singing, she's been getting attention with awards such as the Falcon Ridge Folk uh, Competition, the Rose Garden Coffee House Songwriting Competition, the Rocky Mountain One uh, Folk Festival Competition, the Kerrville Folk Festival, and they go on. And when asked, why do we need songs? Susan said to connect us to ourselves and others. And she said, in my day job as a music therapist with the children, we play and sing songs together. And when it works, you feel the connection through songs. Take Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star, How I Wonder Where You Are. It says it all. We are all alone in this journey, but we want to know the other person. We are literally in the process of figuring each other out through song. And very much look forward to hearing the songs that Susan will be connecting with us. Please give a warm welcome to Susan Levine. Like Cheryl said, I have two little boys at home. Uh, one is five and the other is two. And um, I like to blame them for everything in my life, um, not the least of which is uh, illness. So I spent my fall being sick, thanks to my little one who had pneumonia. And um, then two nights ago, my older one started throwing up in the middle of the night. So I'm waiting for that to kind of run through us all. Um, but anyway, this is a song about gratitude, because I am grateful for them. It's about falling into things and uh, falling into grace when you don't even think you're ever going to get there. It's called Stumbled on Grace. See as far as I could. 
Cheryl said, I do work with um, autistic children in my day job. And um, I think I'm, as a parent, I am uh, constantly amazed by the strength of the parents that I work with um, and the love that they have for their children. And um, I had, this is a song um, from the perspective of one of those parents. She had a very... Um, uh, a very impaired little boy and she would do everything with him from jumping on the bed to spinning around to um, buying a big ball pit and getting in there with him and um, he would get sick a lot and one day um, I walked in the door and she was crying and she said I don't know why things are always so hard and she paused and I thought she was gonna say so hard for me um, but she said for him and I sat there and I cried with her and I thought how amazing it was that this person who deals with um, such a hard thing on a daily basis um, just has so much love and compassion and uh, investment in her child and um, she was an inspiration for me I'm, I'm a little bit of a poor me person <laughs> so I think it was you know for me to just um, to see that was very inspiring so this is a song that I attempted to write from her perspective and um, it's called Save You With A Kiss. He was named after his father Though he looks so much like me And he runs as fast as lightning And he turns just like leaves And it's a long hard road we travel and we never ask for this he can't look me in the eye none and I can't save him with a kiss so we look out the kitchen window count the cars are passing by and he hears the farthest airplane and I dream that he will fly And it's a long, hard road we travel And we never ask for this He can't look me in the eye, none And I can't save him with a kiss And so I try to get into his head I am running, I am spinning, I am jumping on a bed. I crash into the covers and I cry to sleep instead. And I 
dream instead of pray that he is spiritually But there's peace because I love you And there's hope because you will fly And it's a long hard road we travel And we never ask for this You can't look me in the eye no, 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 I can't save you with a kiss Yeah, it's a long hard road we travel Couple of my last couple of songs are from my um, record that I did in 2007 called Atlas. Um, like Cheryl said, I'm gonna keep quoting Cheryl because I need somebody to remind me about my life. I have no brain cells left. I was up at five o'clock with my almost two year old. Um, but anyway, I used to uh, move to a place. I, I moved around a lot, and I used to, um, whenever I felt really comfortable in a place, I felt like it was time to leave. Um, and uh, <laughs> I've been here for, been back in Boston for, I guess, uh, almost 12 years, which is a long time. And I haven't left yet. And it's so nice to see so many familiar faces here, because you guys were all here when I first started playing out when I was back here. A lot of you. But this is a song called Leaving. And it's about wanting to leave and having no money to leave. So um, having to leave in my mind. Yeah, I am 
sweetest song I've ever known. Thank you. I blame my little one for that cracked note. Um, I actually spent my whole fall with laryngitis. Um, so it's, it's actually, this is a huge, a vast improvement for me vocally. Um, the last gig I had, I completely lost my voice. And um, it was very distressing. And it's been till, that was October 16th. And I finally am back. But there are a few notes that, that are not quite back. It's interesting being a singer and a singer for your day job and your night job because uh, it's um, everything depends on your voice and you don't realize like how I mean your voice is kind of who you are and so much of your identity and when it's compromised it makes life very difficult and as a songwriter um, I, I work a lot of my my stuff out in my songs and um, when I can't do that it's very difficult but anyway this is my last song and um, this is called home and I feel like I'm home here and I, I, I it's so nice to see all you familiar people and all you new people and thank you to Cheryl for having me and all the people here at HCAM because uh, it's nice to be back <sighs> slow train going far like a cloud like a bird I am home with my eyes toward the sun and the moon when it's all done with a soft hand on my back, I am home. And I always want to run away. I never know if I will stay in one place for a while. The constant is a bleeding heart, the promise of a brand start the hope against the hopeless part that folks won't see that I am broken and the rain is coming down with a slow and sacred sound There's a slow train going far. There's a cloud, there's a bird.
so much. Thank you very much. When I was growing up, I thought songwriters were very exalted people. At our congregational church in Connecticut, we sang from the Pilgrim Hymnal. And at some point, I began to notice the old-fashioned names of the 19th century authors at the top of the page. I thought for sure these must have been some kind of holy people. Who was this Fanny Crosby? Who could stir the soul and bridge heaven and earth in a song? I wondered how these composers came to possess the divine inspiration that must have been needed to write such venerable songs, songs that would still be in the hymnal 100 years later. And at the movies, the illustrious Rodgers and Hammerstein wrote the enchanting and magical music that swept us away in the theater. From their soundtrack album photo, they'd look up from their perches at the grand piano, gray-suited, looking every bit the formidable songwriters they were. I pictured them collaborating in smoke-filled offices out in Hollywood or somewhere in New York City. And at Scouts and in school, we sang the exhilarating and thought-provoking songs of Woody Guthrie and Pete Seeger. These were important songs about justice, equality, human dignity, and what it meant to be an American. To me, Pete and Woody were larger-than-life figures, much like the working heroes and hobos who hopped the rails in their songs. So basically, what I knew about songwriters growing up was that they were absolutely nothing like anyone I knew. But at that time, we used to go to the Mott's grocery store on the Hartford town line. And back then, the store employed a greeter. And the greeter was a woman named Lil, who wore a blue-green smock and pointed out specials and made small talk as you entered the store. Well, one day we went in, and Lil was all excited. She pointed to a wire display rack filled with copies of an Eddie Arnold record album that featured a close-up of the singer's face on the cover. Eddie Arnold was a big country music star at that time, and he had dozens of hits. Well, Lil told us how she'd written a song and sent it to Eddie Arnold. And Eddie Arnold liked her song, and by golly, he put it on that record. And at that moment, I realized anyone could write a song. <laughs> Suddenly, you didn't need to be a mythical holy figure, a Hollywood genius, or a real writing hobo. You could be a regular person, a person like you and me, and you could write a song. You could write a love song, a country song, or any kind of song you wanted. And shortly after that, Eddie Arnold came to perform at the Horace Bushnell Memorial Hall in downtown Hartford. Lil was sent tickets and sat right in the front row. And Eddie introduced his new song to the audience, and Eddie introduced Lil, the songwriter. While I still believe that some of my favorite songwriters are divinely inspired and magical, but I also know that you and I may just have a little of that magic in us, too. Woody Guthrie said, this land was made for you and me. I've since taken that to mean this life was made for you and me. Thank you. I scream as in a dream with orange shoes and polyester suits of blue and white of can't make right, of stealing food, of thirsting mood, of where to go. No, 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 no. I dream as in a scream of racing cars, of far-off czars, of marching men, of caught again with blackened hoods and dress of wood. Nowhere to go. No. 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 My next poem I titled Friendship. Softly sinking, slowly down, down, down in friendship's pillowy marshmallow glove. One weary soul catching another weary one on the way down, 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 but for pillowy marshmallow love. And I'm concluding with 26 silk blouses. 26 silk blouses each hung up neatly encased in its own clear plastic protector. 26 buttery soft silk blouses lined up like soldiers waiting, waiting for her. Some still with their tags attached, most meticulously cleaned and put away for the next time. Some with brass buttons, some with silk, some with mother of pearl. 
Some with collars, some with bows, some a simple shell, but all waiting, waiting for her. Waiting for parties, waiting for lunches, waiting for theater and visits with grandchildren and even for going to work. 26 silk blouses carefully chosen, shopping with friends, shopping alone. 26 buttery soft blouses for caressing her skin, comforting her soul, making an effort, putting on a show, best foot forward, soldiers on the go. Now they lay quiet, shrouded in stillness among heavy thick air. In comes her daughter and slowly goes through their softness, smelling their lingering scent of times that are gone. 26 blouses shudder imperceptibly as their waiting is done. Thank you. Mm -hmm.